Hi, Tim Sales here. I'm in a, a continuation video. I had started a video that had to do with, is it your fault if you succeed or if you fail? All right, and so I'm talking about Kyla here and I had, you'll have to check the other video out to see exactly what she says, but I write it right at the top of each of the, uh, the different boards, okay? So here we go. Whether you pay them a salary or you pay them straight commission is irrelevant in the topic. Everybody has to recruit. Everybody. All right. And then the next one is oversaturation. All right. That's a big old excuse. I've done a whole video on does it saturate. It's a big old excuse. It's not even real. Who doesn't have a phone? Well, apparently a whole lot of people. Because, like, these companies are trying to get into Africa. All right. So, yeah, it's like a, it's not a real thing. And it's a lot of people out there, okay? So anybody who says oversaturate, it's just a joke. Um, everyone earns on finite levels, okay? So this is a, a, a often confusion thing, okay? So, all right, so that is going to be, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say it's six levels, okay? And then it cuts off. And then your sixth level person here they get six levels, okay? So this person right here can do a whole lot more with their business than I can do with mine within their six levels, even if I was right here. So <clears throat> it is, um, everybody earns a finite level. So it's not that the one person who got in early or the one person that got in here or the one person that got in here, it is how in the six levels, how many people did you get that made sales? That's what this is about, okay? So that whole concept of that five that get five is 25 and 25 get five, and then that's 125, and then each of those 125s get five is 625, and you keep on going and going and going and going, and then it's more than the people on earth, okay? Well, no, no, six levels, okay? It's a finite level. And you can't even do that math when you go get five. Well, wait a minute. Four of those didn't produce. So you got one. You got to start all over again, right? So you, you can't get geometric progression. But it is more geometric progression than it is arithmetic, okay? One plus one, two plus two, things like that. All right. If you blame saturation, go to a younger company. But if you find an excuse in the younger company, like they're not ready, <laughs> uh, you chose your demon. Okay. I've done a company that was uh, six years, seven years old, and I've done a brand new company. I would never do a brand new company again, just for the record. Okay. I would rather it be a bit saturated. Um, the good news is <laughs> guy lands onto the side of Africa in a boat <clears throat> and, uh, and his competitor lands on the other side of Africa. And at the same time, they send back a report to headquarters, their shoe salesman, and they go, you know what? It won't work here. They don't wear shoes. On the other side, the guy says, oh my gosh, it's a huge market. Nobody has shoes yet, right? It's all perspective and how you look at it. Okay, so Kylie armchair expert all right that's really what it is she has no experience in it um she's a professional critic and she stated that she would fail but yet she's advising you wow how incredible what a planet <laughs> that 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 people would actually go oh mm, yeah she's an expert she knows all about it uh no if she's afraid of doing it if she's so disgusted, why, why is she talking about it? That would be a really good question. You ought to ask. You ought to look at how many views she got on makeup and how many views she gets criticizing network marketing. You can tell it's quite a business model for her. All right, professional critics get to use that antagonism. I did a video called How Network Marketing Got a Bad Reputation uh, and another one, uh, another video, and you ought to watch that, okay? Because I give all the clues and she's falling right into it, perfect, about exactly how they do and why they do it. 
It's to get eyeballs. Okay. And so in her advice, she says, just quit. That's what you should do. It's okay. Wow. It's a great, great philosophy. Okay. It's quite a philosophy. She, she shows this thing here. It was a little tiny bit later. It, and she called it, or it's called the sunk cost fallacy. The idea that a company or an organization is more likely to continue with a project if they have already invested a lot of money, time, or effort in it, even when continuing is not the best thing to do. All right? In Spec Ops, if you had that attitude and you were on my team, please let me know early. I don't want you because you're not going to cover my six. My, my back, you're not going to be there for me, all right? Because if it gets a little bit too rough, it's gone a little bit too long, then you're, you're going you're gonna to leave, okay? If I had a girlfriend and I saw that she liked to follow this philosophy, I'd be like, waiter, check, check, please. She's not going to hang around. She's going to find an excuse and bail. People with that attitude I guarantee you, they, they have a string of failures. And I'm not saying that there's not a time where you say, I'm out. And I'll give you that in just a second. But it's the likelihood that, <clears throat> like, what, what does I quit mean? It means apathy. I can't do anything. I can't do anything about it. You know, it's no use. No use in even trying. Okay? So it depends on whether, I'll show it to you in just a second though. So that's quitting school, that's quitting sports, it's quitting relationships. And if you have that philosophy, I can almost guarantee that if you go back, you're gonna find a lot of failures. And they've excused them away. They blame them on others. Oh, it was my boss, oh, it was my company, oh, it was this, oh, it was that. And when you get enough of those excuses out there, well, <laughs> you're trapped by so many things you can't budge. All right? So, um. So when you give your excuses to others and they give you sympathy, it feels really therapeutic, and <laughs> um, but it really damages them, okay? Because you don't want that, right? So <clears throat> when is it the right time to, uh, to quit? Um, first of all, you evaluate the data, each data point, okay? So get a string of data points that really are, that move that business or that thing, okay? Get a bunch of them. And then evaluate each one of them. Like, you know, am I doing what I should be doing? Am I doing that pipeline? Am I effective in the pipeline? All right, is the company not shipping the orders there? Are they shipping them bad? Are they shipping them? Sorry, I dropped my pen. Uh, are they shipping them this? Or is the products already opened? Or is there some kind of a mess? Some, something upset, right? In other words, when is it the company? Is it my upline? Oh, really? Um, no, it's never an excuse. Never an excuse, okay? Um, because the first person in the company doesn't have an upline. I know, okay? So that's never an excuse. So you evaluate real data, including yourself. You be truthful with yourself, brutally honest, as they call it. And then you determine what is the problem? What is the real reason? And if... And if the company is it, okay, good, get another company. But, uh, but just to have the philosophy that says, oh, it's, it's gone on too long, I'm going to quit. Um, it's not your fault, it's popular. All right, so that phrase is popular, but it creates failing and failures. All right, so in other words, if, if, uh, if you think it, it, it creates you failing and it creates failures. Um, it's destructive, and no matter how good it feels, no matter how much you want to do it for others, okay, so you want to give them a safe space. You want to give it to them safe. It's not, all right? So if they say, you know, um, blah, blah, and it's this, and it's this, don't agree. Just, just say, you know, <laughs> I can see you're like really tore up about it, you know, and, you know, and I just kind of say, you know, well, was there anything that you did? You know, no, he cheated on me, and he did this, and he did that, and he did this. Um, okay, well, at the minimum, you chose him, right? You know, like, you got to, at some point, you know, that's the only way it really solves. Um, 
If you want to succeed in life, go back to every failure and figure out what you did or didn't do that caused the failure. Okay, so that's really the, the secret behind it. That's coming from somebody who's built the business instead of somebody who's a critic of the business. It is your responsibility. Armchair expert, if you can't do it, stop advising. That was for Kylie. Um, know you, all of your components. Okay, so my dad was a, um, he dragged, he, he was, he used to drag cars, uh, like race cars, drag cars. And, uh, so we used to rebuild engines and things like that. He was a, uh, carpenter, a master carpenter. And, um, and he was an armchair football player. Never played football in his life, but it was something like I've never seen in my life. Okay, so he would sit there and he'd watch, and then he would watch the commentators. Okay, and so you watch a ball game, and then the commentators tell you what you just saw, right? <laughs> it's kind of like politicians where there's a debate, and then it didn't do so good, and so they want to correct it, whoever the 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 channel is that whoever they're hoping will win. And so they're going to curve, put curves, curve balls on what they said. Um, and that's kind of what I see that she's doing is, is that she is that armchair expert, even though she's never done anything about it. And what used to be uh, really funny is my dad would just get real fired up and he's like, man, they ought to, they ought to change the coach, you know? And, and, uh, and well, I heard the commentator say that. And so now my dad's saying that. In other words, he's just repeating something. He's never been on a football field. He's never played a football game. He's never coached a football game. He knows nothing about it. And so he's just repeating what a commentator said. And that's what Kylie is doing. She's just a commentator repeating what somebody else said. She never chased any of it down to source. I can tell by the way she gives her, her statistics in the next video I'm going to do, uh, wow. Okay, you just wait, wait for that one. But um, so the bottom line is, and I want you to really get this picture because it's the only reason I went through all this, this whole conversation. My dad was a mechanic, okay? So when you break it all down, and if you're a mechanic, you're going to know what I'm talking about. And, <clears throat> and I'm going to try my best to make this real understandable. So you have under a car hood, you have an engine block, okay? And, uh, and you have pistons and you have camshafts and you have rocker arms and you have all these, and it's nomenclature, right? In other words, it's, it's words. But the mechanic knows all those. And he knows the valves and he knows the head and he knows the spark plugs and he knows the carburetor or the fuel injection. He knows all those components. He knows the electrical side of it. He knows the drive chain. And so somebody pulls up and, uh, you know, and they say, you know, like my car's not working right. And, and that mechanic will just ask you a couple of questions and will know exactly where. Okay. That person knows it. Okay. He fully knows everything about cars. And if that car, he doesn't, he's not familiar with that particular car, then he'll pull the manual up and he'll look at the detail of that area and he'll be able to figure it out. Kylie says the word scam or scammer eight times in like a 15, 20 minute video. Okay. That would be doodle talk. And doodle talk is what somebody does when they don't know what they're talking about okay so they've got to make up space when they don't really know their business and uh and and somebody who really knows all the components of a subject can assess just like that and she cannot okay so in network marketing if you know how to generate leads, how to contact those leads. And I'm talking about, let's say that you figure out and you learn one or two lead sources and you just really know them really, really well. 
you know when it's a high conversion. You know when it is, it's not going to pay for itself. You know all the components there, all right? And you know all the components in contacting that person. You learn the nuances. You learn when a person's just not interested and you leave them alone. You learn where they really need it and they really want it. They're just confused. They got false information, all right? And so you learn how to have that conversation in the right way and then how to set the appointment and then how to follow up with them after they've looked at the presentation or how to deliver that presentation, all right? And so in other words, you're controlling each part, just like the engine block and the piston and the crankshaft and the rods and the rocker arms and all that stuff, a mechanic controls those things. He knows them. He can hear them when they're not right. He can hear when the timing's off. In other words, he knows what he's looking at. Somebody who does not know this thing cannot advise. And if you want to have incredible success with it, this is what it takes is just controlling these items. And so uh, I hope this has been valuable to you because um, there was a lot of uh, truth bombs dropped in, here, in this one, okay? So comment down below. If you haven't subscribed, you might consider doing so. Give me a thumbs up and pass it along to somebody else if you like it. Thank you.